after seeing this story, after looking at the reaction to this story, at least the online reaction to it, I am definitely concerned about Gen Z. Gen Z Democrat was owned so bad on social media that his heart started racing and he was he, he admitted himself to the emergency room. And so this brings me back to the point about Vivek Ramaswamy. Yo, if Gen Z wants change, but they are so frail. Now, gang, you saw the title and you saw the thumbnail to this video. Gen Z Lib is rushed to the hospital after uh, being obliterated in a debate. And you probably think to yourself, what the hell could have caused this? Now, I'm going to try to be as fair and balanced as I can here because obviously Gen Z is the next generation. So uh, this guy here, I'm pulling up his tweets for you guys to see. Uh, he got into a debate the other night, a Twitter space debate with uh, Nuance Bro and a couple other, uh, couple other accounts. Uh, Scott Pressler, he was there. And there's actually two clips from that little exchange uh, that I'm going to be leaving in here. And also uh, one from Tim Pool because you see that Tim Pool's, uh he's mentioned in these tweets as well. This guy, you know, I don't worry, I'll explain it here in a second. He made a video on this as well. And, of course, uh, the, the victim playing is, is going on. And I understand why he had a heart incident. He had a heart issue. Obviously, uh, some things happened. His blood pressure shot up. And uh, he had to be rushed to the hospital. But let me give you guys some background really quick before we get into it. I know I'm kind of stalling a little bit for time here, obviously, for... Uh, censorship purposes because sometimes it's like the very first two minutes of a video that of course they try to get you on so you know i am i got to kind of meander around for a bit so here's the deal uh gen z for change at one point in time was called biden bros and jeremy here is one of these uh democrat young activists that uh that work for them the the the, the Sisson brothers the ones who recently got exposed for being democrat operatives getting paid by democrats even though they claim that they're not democrats or they claim that they're not working for them I'll leave a link to a video in the description box to kind of help explain that one. So this guy, Jeremy, he gets into a discussion on this Twitter space, and it just so happens to be that Nuance Bro is there. Now, if you don't know who Nuance Bro is, don't worry. I'll leave a video in the description box. I advise you guys go check him out. He is a commentator himself, just like me. I think he makes less content. He makes much more longer form content. He's very good, very talented, and a, a very, uh, let's just say he's a very rational person. Uh, got a lot of common sense. I, I think he's a little bit more uh, libertarian, but he's still a pretty smart guy. And I actually, like I said, I actually like his content. So I advise you guys uh, go check him out. Uh, you would actually be pretty well impressed. Now, here's the deal. Uh, Jeremy here brought up this. Uh, he just said something that I, you just, it, it, it's actually hard to kind of put into words. It, it's, it's so crazy. Jeremy asserts that 30% of people of color, 30% of black people, are killed every year by the police. Unarmed black people, 30% of them are killed every year. 30%. Based on population growth amongst the community, based on the overall uh, portion of a uh, percentage in population, it can range between 11.6% to 12.4% to 12.7% to sometimes 13.6% to sometimes 13.1%. That tells me that that would be an absolute genocide and that the black race or black people would not exist in America in by 2026, according to this logic. There's no logic in this take, and he got absolutely destroyed by a nuance pro. Now, guys, I'm going to play the first clip for you guys. Roughly right around 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Make sure you guys stick around for the full thing. You'll obviously see in the chat that there are some names that you might be familiar with. One of them is Scott Pressler. We'll play the other one more towards the end of the video because I think it's what happened in the second clip that actually caused him to have to be rushed to the hospital. So enjoy. million black people are getting shot and killed unarmed every year. There is context to that. There's definitely context to those numbers. Dude, you're fucking crazy, dude. That's like a fucking holocaust. And the, dude, every black person would be dead in like fucking three years. Like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. What are you saying? Yet we're still dying dude, in record you know what the numbers actual answer is? than white. Jeremy, do you know what the actual answer is? Because I actually have the real numbers. I Like, you've clearly never done. This is, I'm, I'm fucking mind blown right now, dude. The real number by Washington Post, keep tracks of this. Unarmed black people shot by police 
men and women. It's usually like 10 people, dude. It's like 10, maybe, maybe like 20 in a year. Sometimes it's like eight, you know, it fluctuates. It's like seven to like, like 22, maybe like, that's what it is. Not million. Like that's just total. Do you believe that? Uh, I'm going to have to do more research. If you send me the link, I'll look. You were claiming like fucking, what was the number, Jonathan? 13.2 million. You said 30% of the entire black population. That is crazy. Roughly, that's like, yeah. That's I, like, and I actually dude, believe that. that. Is insane. Like 20 to like 30%. If, dude, legit, yeah. if Harry and Chris were in here even right now, they would be like, dude, what the fuck? We got to tell Elise to fire this guy. This guy's fucking nuts. Like, he's out of his fucking mind. He's smoking more crack than fucking uh, Hunter Biden. Like, this is insane. Dude, that's two Chicago's worth of black people. Yeah, I can't time. believe what I'm hearing. Like, do you, they don't have enough bullets to fucking do that? Probably okay. is like, twenty is fifteen to twenty percent fair? Then no, no, because then it's like six. Do you know 6. numbers? Like, what did you get in in math class? What grades did you get, dude? Like, I can't believe. Have you never talked to anybody like about this issue, like with numbers ever? I am like. Guys, people in the audience, can I get some reactions in here? Like, what are you guys thinking about this? Like, are you guys as shocked as I am? Like, this is insane. This is crazy. You don't even have to know about the, the crime issue at all to know what these claims are, are insane. No, 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 no. Complete, total common sense there. So basically what Jeremy is saying or was saying was that... Uh, he would be absolute that the entire that, that black people as a whole would be completely eradicated off the uh, off, out of the United States in uh, in three to four years according to his logic. Now, like I said before, they're Gen Z. They claim to be Gen Z for change. They claim not to be Biden Bros, even though they were originally called Biden Bros or they were a, a Biden related. Uh, Young people vote. Uh, yeah, it's just one of efforts to get young people to vote Democrat. Let's just go ahead and say that right there is what the hell this entire charade was. That is what Jeremy was a part of. And I'm showing you guys some more tweets. I'm showing you guys the Twitter page for this account. So that way you guys can see that these people definitely use pronouns. They definitely are. And you'll see later on that these people are uh, a little bit on the, uh, the loony side. However, as I said before, I'm a little bit concerned because, you see, one of the things that I have noticed about Gen Z, or at least a lot of people in Gen Z, especially those on the left, is they're not exactly... How do I say this? They don't exactly know how to handle failure. Let me kind of break it down for you this way here. In life, as you grow, and I'm a bit of an old hat here, okay? I mean, I'm an old hat to these people here. I'm in my 30s, even though I have kind of the same mindset or I understand the mindset because we're really not that different when it comes to overall mindset, emotions, and everything. It just so happens to be that millennials have survived a little bit longer and they've actually been through a little bit more stuff. A lot of us went through September the 11th. Some of us went and fought in the Iraq and Afghanistan war, like myself and many, many others. Not trying to, uh, that, that, I'm not trying to upgrade myself above anybody else, but a lot of people experience different issues. The vast majority of you who watch this channel, according to the demographics, are 35 to 44. You went through the 2008 financial crisis, okay? You know what the hell it is like to struggle. Gen Z, I think, is about to enter that, and it actually concerns me because these people are not exactly what we call... Um, it doesn't seem to me that they can handle failure very well. You see, a big part of life is actually getting knocked on your ass, okay? A big part of life is actually getting your ass kicked. I know I'm saying the A word a lot here, and the YouTube algorithm probably will not like that. But the thing is this right here. What is your best teacher in life? It is failure. Now, obviously, he got completely wrecked in this debate. And, you know, it's... It was very, very commonsensical. I mean, it really and truly it was. I mean, dude, 30% of one race getting killed per year? That tells me that that would be an absolute uh, genocide, nuclear holocaust four or five times over. I mean, it's absolutely insane. I have no idea where they get these numbers at. But then again, though, when you look at who the hell is actually in their ploy, you shouldn't be that surprised, especially if you're on Twitter. My account is very, very small. I'll leave a link to it in the description box if you guys want to follow me. Just know that I primarily use uh, Twitter for replies and uh, crap posting, but still at the same time. But here's where it gets really, really, really dicey. You see, some of those tweets I showed you earlier involved Tim Pool. The reasons why they involved Tim Pool was because Jeremy got a little bit upset that Tim Pool did a Timcast episode 
on him and on this instant. Now, guys, I'm going to play a few minutes of this for you guys. It's going to be probably three to four minutes total. I want you guys to see if you pick up any, uh, how do I say, um, any condescension or anything here because Jeremy's obviously playing the uh, the victim, which, you know, I don't really completely fault him here because he was in the hospital. But then again, though, you'll see what I mean when you see this. That when they engage in conversation, they have to rush themselves to the emergency room. Gen Z, y'all are not confidence building. To be fair, I, I really detest this Gen Z for change thing. You don't speak for all of Generation Z, dude. You speak for progressive activists. That's it. But that's the game they're trying to play. They say we are Gen Z. Gen Z is us because the perception they want to create is that if you are someone who is 26 years or younger, you must be progressive. Otherwise, you're a weirdo. Despite the fact that Gen Z, for the most part, is in the minority progressive. That's right. And it's their own data showing this. But let me show you the story and I'll break down for you what happened. I'd like to introduce you to Jeremy. Jeremy, buddy. Bro, if you if you are putting yourself in the ER over this, I hope you're doing all right, man. I don't know what the issue is. I, I, I He says he has some kind of heart issue on this. If you cannot handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. You should not be doing this work. It is a miserable business. You get attacked. You get death threats. I was swatted 15 times last year. It is not something I'd recommend to the faint of heart. If this is where you are finding yourself, bow out. It ain't for you. I hope you're doing okay, buddy, and I hope you're looking into the data. But the story is as such. This young man, who is a content creator for Gen Z for Change, here we have them on, on TikTok, Gen Z for Change, made the outrageous claim in a Twitter space that 30% of black people were shot every year or something to that effect. Let me play for you the clip where Nuance Bro, we've had on the show a commentator, I guess you consider him fairly moderate. This is crazy. You don't even have to know about the, the crime issue at all to know what these claims are, are insane. He, he said after two minutes of this is 15 to 20 percent fair, making the argument that 15 to 20 percent of the black population is shot and killed every year, which is the most insane thing. And this person makes content for Gen Z for change, claiming all this progressive stuff about young people. Dude, that is not Gen Z. I got to tell you, I know for a fact a lot of Gen Z people had them on the show. They do not believe psychotic nonsense like this. Now, if you're a Gen Z person, you want to associate with these people and get mocked so ridiculously, you end up in the ER. So be it. Man, Nuance Bro tweets, I understand the optics of owning someone so hard in debate that it sends them to the ER and a psych ward and gets them to delete their account as an element of humor in it. But I truly hope the young man is doing well and recovers swiftly. Please do not be cruel by piling on. I'm showing you this first because, dude, look, we don't want these fragile people in politics, voting and all that stuff. We get it. But uh, this one individual, I want him to be OK. Now, Tim threw in some quotes from Vivek Ramaswamy talking about people ages 18 to 25, and I've got my concerns about them too. But then again, though, I've also met a lot of people in that age range, especially being in a city that has a university where I actually have been around a lot of these kids that really were not like Jeremy here. It seems to me like, I'll put it this way here, generations, and we, we may do some projects on this in the future. I, I know I bought some books on this to kind of better understand generations. Uh, the silent generation is pretty well received, pr pretty well perceived to be, I wanted to say 1929 to like 19, right? Basically, if you, if you were born in the silent generation, chances are you probably fought in the Korean War, okay? G greatest generation in American history is what we call it. People were tough, kept to themselves, the way they were raised, obviously, you know, they probably came up a little bit more conservative, at least on the social scale. And of course, that there's also where you got a lot of your old school Democrats at, your FDR types. Of course, you could probably go back to the previous generation that fought World War II, and you'll see a lot of similarities. Uh, then you've got, uh, and by the way, I had to learn this right here when I was going through psychology classes. Not, not, not a psychology expert, just, 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 just bare bones classes, okay? So I'm just, I'm claiming I'm not an expert. But 
I do understand it's rare. Then you got the baby boomers. Now, the baby boomers are typically those who were born 1946 post or post World War II in like 1964-65. Now, this right here is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. The baby boomers were known to be the most liberal generation that had came around. They went through the 60s. Of course, those who were born in the early 60s probably voted mostly for Reagan and Herbert Walker. So there's a bit of a uh, there, there's a bit of a split there. But here's where it gets tricky. Uh, then you get to Generation X. Now, me personally, I think that the real perceived time frame for Gen X is uh, 1966 to 1986 or 1988. The tail end is what we call the Reagan babies. I don't consider us to be true millennials. I fall at the very, very end of that there. Of course, most people put it at 1965 to 1979. I don't fully agree with that because there's something about those born between 1980 to 1988 that kind of separates uh, Gen X from, of course, uh, the millennials, which I would say is probably 1989. The thing is, this right here, if you were born in the 80s, chances are you grew up with more, uh, and I, I, know, I, know, I know I'm taking a minute here, chances are you grew up with more violent films, more violent movies. Of course, you came up in the 90s, you had to deal with scandals, political scandals like Clinton, you had to deal with television, certain types of television shows that you were, I'll put it this way here, they say it was a child-friendly era, I personally don't think it was that child-friendly era, that friendly of a child, uh, that that child-friendly of an area compared to what we would see from the millennials. So basically what I'm saying is that the metal is a little bit differently. Then you got the millennials and then you got Gen Z. Well, as I said before, a lot of these Reagan babies and millennials, they went through September the 11th and they also at the same time went through the financial collapse in 2008. It's almost as if to say we had a much, much different type of, a, let's just say, hardship. And typically there's a split of about 60, 40, 70, 30 in each one. Gen Z is becoming much, much more conservative or much, much more working class where uh, boomers are still about, about the same. And of course, millennials, or I would say Reagan babies, are probably a little bit more conservative now in nature. And of course, millennials and Gen Zers, you have a lot more libs in that area. However, in Gen Z, people are coming out of college and they're hitting the real world right away and they're realizing, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is actually worse because inflation is a lot higher than what it was then. So right then, you got to kind of wonder to yourself, is it more of a split 50-50 between Gen Z versus millennials? And that's what kind of concerns me a little bit, at least about a good portion of Gen Z, is the fact that, uh, yeah, you can obviously see that the metal is not the same as what it was from those who were born in the 1980s. However, I think the thing that sent this guy's blood pressure through the roof was this take here. Uh, thank you, Nuance. Um, I just wanted to say that I've been part of Gen Z for Change since 2019. Uh, we were called TikTok for Biden. Uh, we were not partisan, but of course we encouraged Gen Z to, you know, vote for the people that they felt, you know, in their heart were right. The second thing that I wanted to say is we changed our name from TikTok for Biden to Gen Z for Change because we wanted to like because you were nonpartisan. <laughs> Dude, how is TikTok for Biden yeah. nonpartisan? Honestly, That's yeah. crazy. Like, we're nonpartisan. <laughs> like, we're nonpartisan. Like, Dude, we encourage the TikTok for Biden. Are you fucking kidding me right now, dude? Are you fucking kidding me? That is the most amazing thing. Dude, honestly, Jeremy, out of everything you've said thus far, like denying the founding board members when I proved it to you, denying the investment when I proved it to you, you saying TikTok for Biden is nonpartisan, that takes the cake. That's incredible. That takes some huevos. Hey, Joel, can we get Matt Gates in here, please? This is just too good. He's got to get in here. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Joel, if you look at the Jumbotron and just scroll through, um, yeah, that's uh, it's just hilarious. How many Trump voters would you estimate work at Gen Z for change? <laughs> oh, my God, Jonathan. I'm just curious. <laughs> like, seriously. How many Trump voters work for TikTok for Biden? That's what <laughs> they're not partisan, Samira. Well, a lot, lot of them are non-partisan. Non-partisan, okay? So they all right. Well, Jeremy, tell <laughs> us. Okay, I want to hear more from Jeremy about his non-partisan organization that used to be called TikTok for Biden. That's now Gen Z for Change, where everybody uh, shills for Biden. Go ahead, dude. At least we're not fucking cultists like you guys oh are. My like, we got <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Can I add nuance? Ever. Jeremy, what do you think my ideology is? This is so embarrassing. Samira, Samira, Samira yeah. was a tanky oh, you're No, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Points, so I, I think I can tell where you I don't know if you guys caught that, but you're in a cult. I've been hearing this the entire time between both. 
Uh, you know, here's the thing about the Democratic Party today or the, the woke left. If you are, let's just say, somewhat, I, I'll put it this way here, okay? I'm, I'm going to try to use some figures on the left and some figures on the right, okay? I understand this video has gone a little bit longer than I originally wanted it to be, but it, but it was, but I definitely wanted to spend a lot of time to try to create a little bit more nuance here to kind of uh, bring, to, to, to kind of convey this over. And I know I can be a pain from time to time. I, I know. Here's the deal. If you let's 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 take let's let's take the the farthest of the left. We'll take Gene Yinger. Okay, I'm using my hand. Okay, you got Gene Yinger here, then you got Jimmy Dore over here, then you got Glenn Greenwald over here. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald, they attack Gene Yinger. No, 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 but Gene Yinger attacks them and calls them right wing, even though that Glenn Greenwald and uh, Jimmy Dore are definitely more to the left. However, and I'm right back here at Jane. Uh Gene Yinger thinks that um Who's a good, who's a, who's a, he thinks there's someone like Destiny who's more of a neoliberal. He thinks he's right wing. They think Joe Biden is right wing. You see what I'm saying? Joe Biden's one of the most liberal presidents in American history, at least at this point here. And yet Joe Biden is somehow of the right wing. Okay. Everybody is right wing to these people. Okay. So their political ideologies and exactly how far right or how left somebody is, is obviously not ever going to be left enough for them. And even those who were on the right that did not vote for Donald Trump are still labeled to be in a cult. I'll give you an example of what I mean. There have been people out there who said that Matt Walsh, for example, which, by the way, Matt Walsh is pretty well conservative. I'm not questioning conservatism. But then again, though, he did vote for Evan McMullen, and he didn't vote for Donald Trump in 2016, and he railed against Trump in 2020, and a lot of people think he stayed home. But still, at the same time, though, uh, he automatically got labeled a Trump supporter when he didn't even vote for him, where he never was one of the original ones. All right. There's a difference between being a supporter and being a voter, okay? And to everybody on the left, everybody left of their version of center, which is like Joe Biden, like to the right, if you simply are to the right of, say, Biden, actually to the right of any of them, which are very, very much on the left, you're suddenly in a cult. You see what I'm saying? You see, my personal opinion is, is that I think Jeremy here got a little bit upset, got a little bit hot under the collar, and I think that what happened was is that he decided to basically go on a tirade and his blood pressure, or maybe he held a tirade in, and his blood pressure shot through the roof. But then again, though, from what you saw in the photos of him, which, by the way, most of these left are now going to TikTok because TikTok is primarily, a, I can't say it here. But uh, the thing is, it's right here. You saw that he was overweight. You saw that his blood pressure was up. I think what happened was that he just simply shot through the roof. And as a result of that, he had a bit of a episode. That's not good for young people nowadays, especially given the obesity and the body positivity things that we have talked about on this channel and the very, very bad messaging that they have been sending. I showed you, obviously, that photo. And, of course, if you look at his Twitter uh, his Twitter picture, he doesn't look like he's overweight at all. But still, at the same time, though, I'm pretty sure you guys may be getting the gist right now that, obviously, there are certain elements of Gen Z that have been giving very, very bad messaging, have been giving very, very bad uh, ideals to shoot for. And as you guys can see, it obviously can end in very, very tragic ways. Now, here's the reason why it's so concerning. Gen Z is the generation that comes after us. They're the generation that's young now. They're the generation that's coming out of college with all the woke nonsense. And as I said before, I believe that there's more of a split as in like closer down the middle. I know it doesn't seem that way. It sounds a little bit crazy. But uh, these are here the people who are supposed to lead us in the future. All right, if you guys are kind of picking up on my gist. So basically you had another person get beat in a debate, then turn right back around, go to the hospital, then turn right back around, play the victim afterwards, and of course you guys can kind of see that we're obviously in trouble as a nation. Sad stuff. Guys, John Claymore here. I'm going to try to get that other video out on the, the Cleopatra thing of seeing how the got completely ratioed. I'm going to try to get that one out tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a relatively... Uh, busy day for me of course i'm recording these videos the night before because i got to front load my content for the time being because of everything that's going on right now but uh, i should be around sometime in the afternoon so i may be able to squeeze out another video later on the afternoon or i may go and start on wednesday i'm not sure the 1000 subscriber video is going to be coming out as well very, very soon make sure you guys hit that like button subscribe share the video sign up in the comment section i'll see you guys later